We have 600 new positive COVID-19 cases today, keeping us on an upward trend here in Arkansas. There are almost 24,000 cases. A fourth of those are actively fighting the virus. Of those, 325 are in the hospital. That's the most people hospitalized we have seen so far. Meanwhile, one more person has died, making our total 287 deaths here in the state. And as cases continue to grow up here in Arkansas and around the country, Governor Hutchinson made an appearance on NBC's Meet the Press this morning. He was asked questions about the large 4th of July celebrations that took place in the U.S. in which he answered there should have been more face coverings and social distancing. But moderator Andrea Mitchell had a particular question for Governor Hutchinson about if the president visited Arkansas, how would he handle that during the pandemic? Take a listen. With all due respect, though, if the president wanted to come and hold a rally in Arkansas, as he did in Tulsa indoors and in Phoenix, he had a big gathering there. And we've seen Secret Service agents and other members of his advance now sick uh, and also from the vice president's advance in, in Arizona. Uh, would you let that happen in Arkansas? There would have to be social distancing and wearing of masks. If you can't social distance, you have to follow our guidelines, and that's what we would uh, insist upon. In the U.S., Florida has reached a grim new milestone, 200,000 confirmed coronavirus cases. America has almost 3 million cases, and a former FDA commissioner says spread may now be too high to bring it under control. CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen reports from New York. The mayor of Florida's Miami-Dade County says people let their guard down before coronavirus cases began to surge in the Sunshine State. I think that that had a lot to do with... Uh, probably socializing, uh, uh, young kids going to parties, maybe graduation parties at homes, because it's, uh, it's been pretty locked down here for, for some time. The mayor, who says protests were also a factor, shut down county beaches for the holiday weekend and imposed a nightly curfew. Florida, Houston, Texas, Arizona, and Los Angeles County are the nation's COVID hotspots, with cases soaring by the thousands every day. We're not going to really be able to crush this virus at this point because there's just so much infection around. Yeah. We really don't seem to have the political will to do it. Former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb says the U.S. is back where it was at the pandemic's earlier peak in the spring. The difference now is that we really had one epicenter of spread when New York was going through its hardship. Now we really have four major epicenters of spread. On Monday, New York City will enter phase three of its reopening, but in a reversal, that will not include indoor dining. In his 4th of July speech, President Trump stirred up a new controversy when it comes to the dangers of COVID-19. But now we have tested almost 40 million people. By so doing, we show cases, 99% of which are totally harmless. When asked about the president's claim, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner said hospitalizations in his area have increased exponentially. Tom Hansen, CBS News, New York. The World Health Organization shows the United States with the largest amount of coronavirus cases in the world with almost 3 million people who have been infected. Trailing the U.S. is Brazil with 1.5 million and Russia and India both with 600,000. India saw its highest single day increase today with almost 25,000 cases. The country is in its phase two of reopening with restrictions still in place for its COVID-19 containment zones. Flights will continue to be suspended to and from India until July 31st. Many of India's train services are also stopped until further notice. The worst hit European country is now reopening for the first time in three months. Great Britain's barber shops, bars and restaurants welcome customers inside their stores once again. Long lines formed as people waited to go in, but not all cities in the UK are opening just yet. It's estimated a third of shops are staying closed for fears of a resurgence in cases. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson warns other cities could face another shutdown if they are not careful. This government will not hesitate in putting on the brakes and reimposing restrictions. Britain has seen the highest death toll in Europe and more than 300,000 infections. The World Health Organization has discontinued one of its hydroxychloroquine trials, saying there was little to no reduction of symptoms for COVID-19 patients with the drug. 
His trial was only for patients in the hospital being treated for the virus. There are still other studies of the drug for non hospitalized people and people with pre or post exposure to COVID-19. Well, if you're shopping for a face mask, there's now one you can purchase that will help our Kansans in need. THP 11's Vanessa Page shows us how a Little Rock photographer is using his skills to help. A few years ago, Michael Shelton started taking photos to cope with loss. Uh, I lost both my mom and, and my husband within a few weeks of each other. And so um, in the aftermath of that, I kind of turned to photography as a way to deal with the grief and the depression that came with that. With an iPhone camera, Shelton captures the essence of Arkansas life. His photos can now be found on face masks that serve a bigger purpose. When I switched over to photography and then the COVID, you know, with, with the impact that COVID had on Arkansas, um, I reached out to the Arkansas Hunger Alliance, which I have um, volunteered with before, to try to find a way to be able to um, help them continue their work. His photos of Arkansas's beauty are printed on the mask and sold on a website, and all proceeds go to feeding people who are food insecure. Um, and nearly 600,000 Arkansans struggle with food insecurity prior to COVID, and so now we're seeing those numbers skyrocketing. And so um, the avenue that I thought would best help them was to create these face masks. I mean, I think that that's an important thing to remember, and you know, and we can all find a way to help. I mean whether it be small or, or big. Shilton also encourages the community to get involved by going to the organization's website to learn more about food insecurity or to give back. In Little Rock, I'm Vanessa Page, THV 11 News. And we have a link to the website where you can purchase one of Shelton's masks over at THV 11.com.